I'm, uh, my name is Michael Pelzel. I studied um, first piano and organ. So actually um, I wasn't in, or I'm still an instrumentalist. And um, I studied in, in the Lucerne Conservatory of Music, then in Basel and Berlin and Karlsruhe. But as uh, further I got in studies, I moved more um, in the direction of music theory and composition than being um, an instrumentalist or sort of I, I always combine both activities. I still play concerts as an organist and compose. And yes, so I predominantly compose works for for um, acoustic instruments, so not so much electronic um uh, electronic setups and i had been visiting south africa um actually many times in 2010 2011 2000 already one earlier stage and i'm very much influenced by um also in in some of my works by the okadinda and amadinda playing techniques that i also studied in uh, uct with Dizu Plotjes. Um, attended some some lessons and I learned about the the mis mysteries and fascinating aspects of that of these instruments and also I was in India and I always try when I go to other countries to find some common um, common language aspects or common musical language aspects that sort of speaks to me and try to sort of smoothly integrate these elements into my my music so um I, I think this might be enough as an introduction um maybe we have some two three minutes at the end where you also can ask some questions so if you don't mind i would now um actually um is it maybe better when you play the youtube link of the music that I want to present, I would like to play two or three minutes just to give you a little idea of of the 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 sound of the music for two or three minutes from beginning on, please. Um, I will show you the score a little bit later. I just wanted to say some two or three introductory words to the piece. I mean, you have heard it's um, some aspect that fascinates me a lot in my music, in actually a lot of my musical pieces, even though they are completely different also from each other, is to sort of trying to build an orchestra of sound colors that are overall built up of the same color so so if you you want to imagine it's it's like if you if you decide to 
paint a painting in overall red color and then in detail you start to uh, to to um, sort of split it up and make it in more detailed um uh, timbres and and uh, more shadowy or more bright red color but it's it's overall it's the same color and in this piece as you have obviously heard it's about these gong sounds i mean in this piece now paradoxically there is no no percussion playing so all the instruments are somehow trying to find sounds on their instrument to imitate um gongs you have heard it in the piano damped piano strings then on the cello on the low strings it also works excellently well when you use paper clips and put them on the strings then you also have uh have um uh gong sounds low gong sounds or very overtony nasal uh string pits sounds of the cello or even boat sounds and on the bass clarinet with slaps and and, and so on and so on so it's about gong sounds and reverb and as you might have obviously noticed just by reading, uh, just simply by reading the title of the music piece, it refers to, to Pink Floyd. And actually, I started to write this piece just um, when, uh, actually in March or February, March 2020, when COVID started. And also, this was a maybe for all of you and for all of us was a very special time because borders were closed you know so it's a very strange thing in Europe that borders are closed and you are not allowed to transfer country borders and and there was actually it was very strange and obviously very very um upsetting also because all the concerts were were cancelled on the other hand side it gave you a lot of also freedom and space to think and compose and I, I use this moment to sort of change my my language of of music into something else maybe into something more coming from inside out um, more introverted than extroverted maybe and I wanted to sort of find through this gong sounds uh, an approach maybe like the uh, maybe the overall mood of the album um, Dark Side of the Moon of Pink Floyd, which is also, as the title says, maybe it's on the on the darker side of, of the mood. It's for me, it's a very important, almost like symphonic poem in 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 um, in this uh, rock style music. So it, I was very impressed by this music and this this uh, hidden side of the moon is sort of a reflection of this piece now maybe to talk a little bit you will hear the, the entire piece in the concert as Theo said I think maybe to to yeah uh, Theo, I can see you running to the microphone <laughs> sorry I heard yeah. my name I heard my name so I had to respond yes correct we'll, oh, yeah. <laughs> be, streaming, we'll be streaming out the uh, the entire composition tonight indeed okay perfect because I just I've just seen you running to the microphone, so <laughs> I did not want it. Um, perfect. So now maybe also this chain, I mean, this. I talked about the colors, the overall colors of the music. As you will hear later on, these gong sounds are combined with some two or three other ideas or it's it's like a modular way of composition it's not so much actually developing it's more static as you might might know from music of of um, um spectral composers like Gérard Griset or or um uh, or also maybe even in African traditional music I don't think we you have that that aspect of so-called development uh, as in a Beethoven symphony it's more like that the music is a um um uh, what what is uh, zustand in 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 english i i just have a, a black condition a Con condition yeah it, it, that you just have an overall condition or or american minimal music which is obviously also somehow derived from 
from African music uh, by its roots. So you have um, more like a static condition in which the music flows and not not the theology, uh, 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 the not theology, but but teleologic, tele teleological uh, progression or development that leads you um, straight forward. Uh, so, and it's not. I mean, I don't value it. It's it has nothing to do with with uh, quality or not. I mean, you have uh, it's 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 just a description of different music. And in this piece, in other pieces, I worked a lot with a sort of newer form and development and sort of compressing the music and then spread it out. And here it's more like an, an, a laid back idea of letting time flow and not having development, just just letting the elements speak by itself. And there are there is like some two or three contrasting elements, one outbreak with 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 with, with loud, loud piano um, uh, piano clusters coming down and and then there is one element and a friend of mine when he heard the music in the concert he said it has a little bit some flavor of Claude Vivier and I quite liked this you know this genius Canadian composer Claude Vivier which also um that also combines maybe in a in a way like Charles Ives or or um um I just don't remember the composer that made Ionisation Vares, Edgar Vares, that sort of um, combines um, different elements that um, might come from completely different uh, uh, stylistical aspects or from at the at the first first um, impression have nothing to do with each other or are not in a way referring to each other. So, maybe um do i have some two minutes more or is it already I, am i running behind or no no uh we started late so you can uh, you're most welcome to continue so um maybe f how much time do i have left five eight minutes or uh, roughly eight to ten minutes yes okay 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 that that is that is perfect that is perfect um so I can um, maybe I can show you. I can try to share the screen now. So here you can see these first elements that you have seen. The the the, the just the um, flageolets, the overtones of the piano strings, and then this is sort of a second variation. And here with the violoncello, I compose like pedals to the music. I mean, it's like that first you have the gongs only and then you have uh, obviously you have the piano pedal but by um sort of doubling some um notes with the cello for example here i can sort of make a a pedal effect into the into the music and hold some some notes simply through and this is one next element. I think it was he heard once. It comes many, many times in the piece. It's like a, a three pitch sort of motif, if you wish. Here is A, G, and um, E flat. So major, major, second, major, third. This is an element that I used a lot. It's like a refrain sort of in the piece. And I can show you the the more Claude Vivier like element or the outbreak element that you have not heard. So you can imagine that the, uh, or it's just the idea that these gong sounds of the piano are more and more decorated or over decorated with more and more uh, other instrumental sounds, as you can see. I mean, it's sort of a little bit has still. Um, progressive idea but not much and here is this outbreak I think yeah here is the first outbreak where everybody sort of where it comes all together in a in a rhythmical unison and so this is sort of like a concentration of time in in one moment so maybe maybe what is also important I quickly will speak some things um 
in this piece and also in other musical pieces, I'm very interested in having the time, the time concept is like having different functions of time. So it's once this time that you heard in the beginning with the gongs, which is a time which is could be described as timeless time. You should forget about the, the clock, forget about time moving forward, forget about a uh, progression. So a time that is not um, sort of imposing something artificial, no pulse, no, no forward pushing ideas in the time. So a time that is time concept of music that is basically the music is freely floating in time. And the contrast, what I'm trying to say is these outbreaks where you have a very, very um, clear and uh, I would say structured concept of time where time is compressed sort of, you know. So I, so in this music, I try to have this completely open, free and static and laid back time. And then on the other hand side, sort of like to compensate the maybe the structure the open structure in the beginning to compensate it's like a compressed time where all instruments play many many notes in a very short time and then it's over and it starts from beginning to be very quiet so you can in nature maybe imagine like a summer day completely cloudless and then having a very a very outbreak of a of a of a um a, a weather what is what is gewitter torment tormentage or a gewitter a thunder and thunder and rain just a very short moment with heavy thunder and rain and then it immediately opens up with uh, with sun i mean you in cape town might know this very well because you're close to the sea that the weather changes a lot but it's really um a very very um sort of sort of very much more intense time feeling as you can imagine this summer day with this with this thunder and rain for five minutes you will remember these five minutes and it would be two hours and the rest of the day maybe you would remember as five hours even though it was 12 you know what i mean so so you have either the spread out and time that maybe because nothing happens you don't have a, such a clear remembrance but to, to go to the very simple uh, example with the thunder, because maybe maybe you have to take the the chairs in and the and the and the table and do many things in a short time because the thunder and the rain comes heavily, you will remember this moment longer as it it in in reality is. I think this is a very simple uh, observation of time time experience of of human beings or maybe also also animals, obviously. Um, Exactly. Uh, in, in Namibia, they always say genau. <laughs> Everybody says genau. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, genau. Um, I just wanted to say some words about the background, how I composed the music piece. Um, normally, I try, as I said, I try to build up a form with um, um, with the upbuilding, with processes, with development ideas, and in this case, not. Um, actually, it comes from a practical aspect from my composition technique. Normally, I make like a, a concept from beginning on. It's like a, it would be like a roadmap where I want to go with my composition. I say I want to go from here to here, and here comes a, another section that contrasts in that and that, that. And I got lost always while composing, and I lost time. And I was very stressed because I was on, only in the half of composing and I still had halfway to go and the time was running out. So I said, I don't want this stress. I want a complete different concept. And I composed these different um, musical ideas. Also, I composed them differently, like these song elements with the, with the three um, um, pitch motif. I composed like variations of it so maybe three or four or five variations once just 
with one instrument, then with two, then a chorale. And also the gong element, I composed different variations. So the compositional technique or the formal idea is actually, you could see it simply, and then I will end very soon, you could see it as a actually a variation form where you have a, a sort of a, a main idea and variations, but it's actually more than one variation cycles overlapping. So you can, ha you have one element and its variations, the second element and its variations, the third element and its variations. And it's not, there is no systematic. It's not, not for every, for every element five, for the one element, it's three variations, four for the other five or six or seven. And I composed these elements almost to have to a completely fully out instrumentated stage. And then like in a mobile or mosaic or yeah, mobile, you could say, I tried to just feel how to combine. And I basically sat on the table, had these elements, put them together, how I felt like. So in order to also push me away from, from, from this development idea so uh, as i as i described before to 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 push myself into a new direction of my own compositorical language so maybe maybe um this should be enough for now you should continue with other presentations i think and i will finish here Michael, thank you so much. You can hear this, the applause in the background. It's most uh, most interesting, most insightful. Um, do you have a minute for questions? I'm quite sure that they no, will. Yeah, yeah. No problem. Um, so this is a bit tricky. Um, an audience member should maybe march up to the microphone or be handed a microphone. Just standing up. <laughs> right. Uh, William, William Furi, you know, and he's at the mic. Yeah. <clears throat> like I should pick a mic. Um, Michal, thank you very much for for really wonderful uh, presentation and I think it'll help us a lot as we're kind of working through, um, well, listening through your composition this this evening, right, Theo? Um, I, I've got a question about, about the gong synthesis because I'm getting a sense just looking at the score but I didn't have enough quite time to to see exactly what you know the, the the notes. Did did you synthesize a uh, gong tone? Did you work from a kind of spectral analysis um, for the gong tone? Um, and if so, yeah, I'm I'm interested in how did you get to the to the pitch content of of the composition? So I, I, especially at moments where you have the the kind of pedal written out and the the cello and so on, whether that's kind of creating a, a support for a kind of overtone structure on top of that or or is it more abstract kind of sense of pitch generation that you that you using here? Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. That's a very good question. I um, am I still he uh, audible in the because the you, thing is very strange when I speak, it's complete silence here. So I don't know if I'm in the hall with you. You can hear me. We can hear you. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much for this question. Actually, uh, it's very good that it comes because that's one important aspect that I more or less forgot in my presentation. So thank you so much. Um, it's a little bit the same as I described before. Maybe, maybe. Um, I mean, I studied with with Georg Friedrich Haas, and earlier on, I was very much into, as you say, spectral. Um, aspects analysis etc and um but in this piece um it's more like an intuitive way of working with it or maybe it's a disappointingly simple simple way so i really work with basic overtone ideas so for example i leave instruments run parallel and obviously these have to be very soft instruments and maybe it's an idea that comes also from or organ re registration techniques so you can imagine very simply a cello in the lowest uh, uh, register with a c and on top of it a g you know or a, or a b uh, so you have the a fifth parallel or or um, octave plus a fifth and then dynamically adjust it so that the, the lower uh, melody is slightly louder than the upper and what you get is sort of I mean it's it's very simple but sometimes it's completely fresh and new colors it sounds like one instrument obviously you cannot do it with 
like a bassoon or an oboe because it has such a rich overtone structure and it will not sufficiently melt with each other. So, so the, the, the concept of my harmonic thinking is actually, because as Georg Friedrich Haas, my teacher always said, writing spectral music is actually sort of a paradox because each instrument, as you obviously know, has its overtone structure. So as soon as I combine maybe 15 instruments in an overtone chord, I mean, even let's say 15 string instruments, they will melt very, very well. But each of these pitches of the 15 instruments has its proper uh, individual overtone structure. So it's it's always an artistic imitation of a spectral chords and not a uh, chord and not an, and it has it's always a, a fantasy thing like like basically like a, a C major chord is a is sort of a, 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 a how should we say it's like a, a, a some some traditional or cultural um uh, common sense opinion that this is a beautiful accord that has that has grown in uh, but it could also be different i mean why is it that why is it a triad and why is it not a, a tritone you know so it's um and and with this it's a bit the same that uh, the the spectral a spectral chord that is played by many instruments is an artificial thing but but how i were uh, now i'm frozen i think can you still we, we can still hear you yeah um, I, I see my face completely frozen. Can you hear me still? We can hear you, yeah. Okay, perfect. Because my face was frozen for a moment. Um, perfect. So, what, so actually, I have to disappointingly, uh, disappointingly admit that I work very intuitive. So I, I compose the, the gongs and then I add the other instruments and also, it's not that I want to control very closely the gongs. So I, I don't say the player, you have to play the 15th overtone or whatever or whatever. I describe, I say dark overtone. Or also when I write the multiphonic, I write multiphonic, low. I describe it because I had this experience a lot. Then I put all the fingerings in and the first instrumentalist says on my instrument, it doesn't work. So it's actually better to describe it properly and let them do what they can, what they know best and can do because they normally the players are very uh, are bright enough to to do it and also i i personally i'm a composer i love to give the musicians some freedom you know like a harpsichordist that plays something of bach helbel or of of uh, uh, georg böhm from a baroque period where actually there is a lot of freedom i mean if you play if you play um uh, um uh, a harpsichord piece of the Bar Baroque period from two or three players, it can sound completely differently. And I love this idea of having the, um, the, the musician and the player as a um, central aspect also in the composition. I mean, I know there is different traditions. There are other composition uh, composers that say, I describe it exactly how it has to be and it has to be executed exactly like this but i love it to have some aspects defined and in others to have the freedom of the musicians coming into my composition like uh, as i said from the from the baroque period where you can uh, play a, an arpeggio like this or like that and the last aspect is and there i really have sort of a concept to work with spectral chords i sometimes say um i call the chords polyspectral chords you would you will hear them not so much in this piece but also a little bit and it's sort of actually a very simple form of a spectral chord with a very high um uh, with, a, with a high um presence of the of the basic note of the octave of the fifth and then in the middle area it's sort of a Scriabinesque chord um, of this mysterious chord of Scriabin with, with some um, major thirds put on each other, two or three major thirds. It's sort of like an overtone chord, or you could say a sort of augmented dominant chord. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of added some free, intuitive 
pitches and colors that has nothing to do with the spectral chord. And on the very top, when I work with large orchestras, I put uh, overtone chords again. So it's it's actually sort of fantasy spectral chords that I call polyspectral, but actually it's not polyspectral. It's monospectral with some fantasy aspects. So I hope I could could at least some somehow answer uh, aspects of your question. Yeah. No, that's great. Thank you very much. Sorry, I was very long, but it, uh, it's one not of the all. central aspects that I did not mention yet. Not at all. That's extremely interesting to listen to. Um, any other questions? Michael, I always say I don't know how to thank you, but I do not know how to thank you for your time, for your effort. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's... It is um, it, it, it is simply stunning to to have you on board, and I do hope that you can be down in Cape Town quite soon in 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 person. Um, tonight we will listen to the entire work, and it should be streamed out, so you could also tune in if you if you would. Mm. Want. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And just just to mention, I just got permission one hour before, so it's no problem from the ensemble for this oh. piece. So Fantastic, fantastic. So it's, it's, uh, it's perfectly fine. And thank you so much. It was a great pleasure to be with you uh, in person. And it's it's so much uh, fresher and refreshing than than have it pre-recorded for me at least. So I'm I'm much more the live person. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Take care, Michael. Speak soon. Thank you so much. Bye bye. All the best.